Jimmy Butler might be the most improbable star in the NBA. Since he was traded to the Miami Heat almost two years ago, Jimmy has basically been ignoring his biggest weakness on the court, and I think it tells us something about what he's proved as a player and what kind of success you can have at the star level in the NBA. In his 11th NBA season and at the age of 31, Jimmy Butler had the best season of his career to me. He averaged 22 points on a career best true shooting percentage, 61%, a career high in rebounds, assists, and steals. Owen, he guards the best perimeter player every night, and he's going to make one of the all defensive teams. I would put him on the first team if I had a ballot. The thing about Jimmy's season that's insane is his true shooting percentage from this year. Everything tells us that you shouldn't be able to have an efficient shooting percentage with no three point shot, but Jimmy is different. Here's a list of some players that shot over 60% in true shooting percentage this regular season. If you look at some of the guys, it's guys like Zion, Williamson, Giannis, who mostly live at the rim, or someone like James Harden or Kyrie Irving, who are accurate from the three-point line. Jimmy gets to the free throw line, but he isn't an inside force like Giannis, and he isn't an outside shooter like Harden. Just last season, when you check the numbers for guys that took at least 200 jump shots, Jimmy was by far the least efficient jump shooter. No one was even near him. He was worse than Jordan Poole and Russell Westbrook on jumpers. With Jimmy's physical tools at 6 foot 7, 230 pounds, there's usually a few play styles that you see at his position, but he's a little bit different. You don't really see Jimmy running around doing spread pick and roll each play down to shoot a pull up three like some of these other guys. You barely see him shooting threes. He takes two of them a game and shoots 25%. Like if you're a wing player and you don't have some type of three point shot, you're kind of limited for what you can do on offense. And it does limit his offensive potential. I don't have Jimmy in that tier one of superstars in the league because of that weakness. But still, Jimmy being this good in this NBA era and having his best year in a bad three-point shooting season is kind of wild. You also don't really see Jimmy over dribbling to get by his defender all the time like a Paul George or a Jason Tatum. He gets to the free throw line a lot, but you don't really see Jimmy elevating over the top of centers for a dunk. He's athletic, of course, but he plays a little bit below the rim. That's why his efficiency is solid. He gets to the free throw line and makes them, which is weird because if you're a good free throw shooter, then you're usually a decent three-point shooter as well, but that's not the case with Jimmy. Sometimes he's not even looking to score and get to the free throw line. You check the box score and you see he has like 12 points with three minutes left in the third quarter, but he's got seven assists and six rebounds, and he's been controlling the game on defense. If you followed his career, you've known he's never been this super reliable outside shooter. That's always been the thing in his scouting report. You want to force him to take jump shots. But he did have stretches in Chicago and Minnesota and Philly where he went to the pull-up jumper and was a bit more accurate from the outside. The stats from the outside were better then than they are now. But I remember years ago everyone saying, oh, just wait until Jimmy improves his outside shot. It's going to happen. And then it just got worse and he stopped taking them unless he was in a situation where he had to put it up. With Miami, he just slowly grinds out a 48-minute game with his defense, IQ, and an in-between game on offense. You don't really see Jimmy making plays that gets tons of engagement on a Bleacher Report tweet or something. He's just consistently productive throughout the whole 40 minutes. This season, the Heat were 6-12 in games he didn't play in, and 33-19 and in games he did play in. You know, this is why I'm like a big fan of Jimmy. He's like one of my five or six favorite players, because he's slightly different from the norm for his position. This season probably accelerated my path to being an old head, honestly. I mean, how many times did you check a box score and you saw a team at 130 points? You saw a bunch of guys put up 20 points, 30 points. They're running spread pick and rolls, pulling up from anywhere. And then you just got Jimmy with his throwback style, finishing a game with 12 free throw attempts, and he played lockdown defense. I'm finding myself liking Jimmy even more as a player, because I know some of these numbers guys are putting up, they are not putting this up in a playoff series. So I guess I can do a little Heat Bucks preview at the end here. This video might be up after game one, I'm not really sure, so it might be irrelevant information. But ESPN had a little preview of teams that I think are on upset alert for the first round, and they had Giannis as the thumbnail. I am not ready for a second year in a row of the Bucks possibly losing to the Heat. The funny thing about this series, and a potential meetup with all the other Eastern Conference contenders for the Heat is, is that Jimmy hasn't played in any of those games except for one against Philadelphia last week in a game they won. I know some of these missed games weren't Jimmy's fault, but I would love it if it was some type of plot that Jimmy set out these games against the best East teams so none of them can see him on the court this year. And then in the playoffs, all of a sudden they're seeing Jimmy in his best season. 
Of course, it's not like players and coaches aren't familiar with Jimmy Butler's strengths and weaknesses on the court. He's been in the league for like 10 years, but you gotta throw out these Bucks Heat regular season games from the previous months because Jimmy didn't play in any of them. The first two happened in December, and the last one was in a game that didn't matter like a few weeks ago or like a week ago, I don't really remember. It would be kind of worse this year if the Bucks took another L to the Heat, but they are a bit better for the playoffs this year, and the Heat as a team I think are a little bit worse. I say as a team because Jimmy and Bam Adebayo had their best seasons, but around the edges of the Heat's roster it's a little bit worse. Let's see if Jimmy and Bam can carry this Heat roster against the Bucks. We all know who the Heat's X Factor is, it's Goran Dragic. He had a few decent games last month, but he still looks a half step slower, and that probably means more Kendrick Nunn, he's having a good year. If Dragic isn't being guarded by Drew, I mean there are favorable matchups for him to get into the paint, run a pick and roll with Bam and get to the free throw line. He's going to need a big series that the Heat are going to win. Duncan Robinson going from 44% last year from the three point line to 40% this year is kind of big because even though 40% is a great percentage, I mean that's one of the highest in the league, a small drop off in percentage like that could mean the Heat have to find those points in other ways. And they've struggled on offense so it might be difficult for them. Tyler Hero seems to have picked it up a bit at the end of the season. The Heat are going to need him to average in the high teens on good efficiency to win this series. I have the Bucks in 6 games in this one. We know the story of how the Heat beat the Bucks in the bubble playoffs last year, but when I hear people talk about that series, it was as if the Heat were beating them by like double digits in each win. It was 5 games, yes, but that series was close and almost every game came down to the wire. If the Bucks got slightly better guard play, a slightly better Giannis, and if Jay Crowder didn't shoot like 80% from the 3 point line, the Bucks might have won that series. The difference this year is going to be Giannis playing better from the jump and having Drew Holiday be able to play 40 minutes a night. The Heat can win of course, it's not going to surprise me, but I'm betting on Giannis saying I'm the best guy in the series and closing it out in front of the Heat's home fans. If the Heat lose this series in the first round, it doesn't mean they were frauds. I'm going to give them and some of the other teams a break because of this short offseason, having to deal with injuries and the safety protocol stuff. I haven't seen too much discussion about Jimmy Butler's regular season so I had to talk about this. But if the Heat do pull it off, it's likely going to be because Jimmy was able to put on a similar performance as he did in the NBA Finals last year and once again show us that you can win in the NBA and be a high level impact wing player without playing like everyone else. Obviously being able to shoot from the outside and being able to break down players and play above the rim makes it easier for you and your team's offense, but you got to find other ways to win and I think Jimmy is a blueprint for other guys coming into the league even if they aren't all stars. I definitely enjoy the modern game and all of that good stuff, but it's cool when you have guys that have different ways of impacting winning. Jimmy should get more respect for having this type of season because of the crazy circumstances of this past year and the Heat slightly having a worse roster. He really is a throwback type of player. It's kind of crazy a primary ball handler can just sort of ignore this massive weakness in a league where everybody is allowed to jack up a three point shot 8 seconds into the shot clock and this primary ball handler is still one of the best players in the league. And that is it for me. Appreciate it if you made it to the end of this one. Let me know how you're feeling about Jimmy Butler and who you got in the Bucks Heat series down in the comments. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like as it does help the channel do better. And consider subscribing if you want to see more from me.